Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Pentecost. Let us prepare our hearts and minds during the prelude. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that, overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. 
These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The unfolding events of recent weeks in our world, our nation, and our own community makes the following quote from Mother Teresa, now Saint Teresa of Calcutta, all the more poignant. If we have no peace, she said, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Mother Teresa, alongside her missionaries of charity, Serve the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the lepers, the unwanted, the unloved, the untouchables, the shunned, and the uncared for in the slums of Calcutta. Among her many experiences was the time a man came to the mother house to tell her about a Hindu family with eight children who had not eaten anything for days. Mother Teresa later recounted, I took enough rice for a meal and went to their house. I could see the hungry faces, the children with their bulging eyes. The sight could not have been more dramatic. The mother took the rice from my hands, divided it in half, and went out. When she came back a little later, I asked her, where did you go? What did you do? She answered, They are also hungry. They were the people next door, a Muslim family with the same number of children to feed and who did not have any food either. That mother was aware of the situation. She had the courage and the love to share her meager portion of rice with others. In spite of her circumstances, I think she felt very happy to share with her neighbors the little I had taken her. In order not to take away her happiness, I did not take her any more rice that night. I took her some more the following day. The medieval German mystic and theologian Meister Eckhart said, You may call God love. You may call God goodness. But the best name for God is compassion. It is the God whose name is compassion who was so evident in the life and ministry of Mother Teresa. It is the God whose name is Compassion, whom we see at work in our gospel reading today when we are told that Jesus of Nazareth saw the crowds of people coming to him and had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. In the gospel according to Matthew, the Greek word for compassion occurs only five times, with today's reading being the first occurrence. 
Each time this word compassion appears, Jesus is the one feeling it as he observes the vulnerabilities, the illnesses, the physical afflictions, the hunger, the social ostracism impacting those around him. Compassion is not simply feeling sympathy or empathy, but rather acting concretely on behalf of the afflicted. For compassion means literally to suffer together. Jesus' compassion, his suffering together with those in need, extends to the work of those who follow him as he summons his inner circle of disciples and dispatches them to continue and expand the scope and the scale of his teaching and his proclamation and his healing. He sends them out, instructing them, go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Jesus' original audience lived in a brutal, broken world. We live in a brutal, broken world. We have let the voices of oppression have power. We have watched violence occur without demanding justice. We have been too comfortable and complacent in our privilege and allowed indifference and neglect to cloud our judgment. We have let our witness for justice and peace be quieted rather than unleashed and amplified in the face of cruel and inhumane treatment of our brothers and sisters of color. These are chaotic days, and we must not forget that in the words of Mother Teresa, we belong to each other. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we too are sent into the world just like our Lord's first disciples. Redeemed and commissioned through word and sacrament, we are sent to bring compassion to our increasingly compassionless, peaceless world. We are sent, we are empowered to live out compassion because God first loved us. That's our authority. That's our power for making a compassion-filled difference in people's lives by suffering together with others in love, by bearing the pain of others in love, by sharing life together in love. It is harvest time, and we have been sent by God to work in the fields. The work is plentiful, the work is grueling, but the work is necessary. Among the sick and diseased, the led astray, the discriminated against, the harassed, the helpless. All these and many others are longing for a glimpse of the kingdom of God on earth. We are people of faith, claimed in word, bath, and meal to live with compassion as we proclaim that God loves and values all people. We cannot allow our witness to be soft or our actions hollow. Change can only happen by changed hearts and minds. The message of God's grace in Jesus the Christ compels us out into the world to be difference makers for the sake of the world that God so loves. This means taking risks, acting with boldness, and being confident that the God of the universe is an advocate for all people and that we are the hands and feet of this God to bring about this life-giving work as we care actively in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us join together to pray for the church, our nation, and for all who are in need. O God, the Holy One of blessing, send your spirit of tender might throughout your church. Strengthen all who cannot assemble for worship. Guide the church's use of technology and make yourself known to those who have no access to such materials. O God, the Holy One of truth, we pray for your spirit on all who share your good news in word and deed. Empower the church as it uses both historic and innovative words to proclaim your gospel across the street and around the globe. O God, Holy One of creation, continue your care for the earth through our efforts. Where there has been fire or flooding, drought or storm, may the land be renewed. Bless farmers and ranchers and protect migrant farm workers as they toil in the sun to harvest our food. O God, Holy One of unity, as we commemorate this Wednesday, the martyrdom of the Emmanuel Nine, who in 2015 were killed while assembled in their Charleston church for Bible study, we pray, help us end the scourge of racism and white supremacy, protect protesters, halt those who intend violence, preserve the rule of law. Raise up leaders who model repentance and reconciliation and support legislators who seek justice in our land. O God, Holy One of compassion, heal the sick and help us embrace the fearful. Uphold healthcare workers and medical researchers as they work on our behalf. Help us assist the unemployed Show us how to provide safe housing and daily food for the homeless in our nation and around the world. Keep us ever mindful that we belong to each other. O oh God, Holy One of hope, sustain those who cannot endure their suffering but are led only to despair. Pour your grace into their hearts and reassure them of your sustaining presence. O oh God, Holy, Eternal One, we praise you for the lives of all the faithful departed. At the end of all things, bring to yourself all your treasured people to abide in your presence forever. Receive these prayers, O God, and those desires too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our service now begins. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.